that the fact that we start doing more of those things, we're already losing self-control. And these days, people must take photo. <laughs> so I cannot, don't take photo, man. I just want to sit here and watch. It's beautiful. Like, like, stop asking me to take photo. Welcome back to another episode of Wise and Shine. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut. Hi, this is Eric, Mr. Positivity. And I'm Dawn, SG Budget Babe. This month, a lot of things happen. Uh, a lot of things happen. A lot of great documentaries came out. You know, like the parliament had some new things to talk about. You mm-hmm. know, the, the market looks pretty crazy also. You know, there's so many things, right? So we got a lot of topics for you. Uh, yep. Every month is something interesting, right? <laughs> But today, today we want to spend a little bit more time to focus on this um, documentary, right? It's a CNA documentary, right? It came out called Young and in Debt, right? So it went viral and there are a lot of nooks and crannies uh, that has been covered within the documentary. But basically the video went viral, right? Yeah. Because you're talking about um, how the young people are now getting into debt earlier and a lot more. Part of the culprit as the video uh, suggest is buy now the rise of buy now pay later services because of that easy access to credit so mm. people are spending more because of that illusion mm. they get from you know purchases seeming cheaper because after all like a you know a three hundred dollar chair don't say names <laughs> suddenly <laughs> can seem a lot more affordable when it only costs you one hundred dollars right mm. because it's broken down into three installments so there's a whole gist and obviously like you know the statistics are really pointing to that increased trend both from um consumer monies that have gone through buy now pay later services as well as the fact that merchants who have offered BNPL services are now saying that they have less card abandonment. So great for merchants, right? Because like people don't abandon the card, so they can hard out. But not so good for consumers. I think it's, it's a bit worrying, right? Because mm-hmm. the fact that the merchants are seeing less card abandonment means that consumers are thinking less mm-hmm. about their purchases. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I have this habit of I like something I add into card. Then like, I just let it sit there, right? And then I every now and then just keep going back to it. And if it's like, you know, if it's still there and I still really want it, oh. then I will give in and I will buy. That's a very interesting I never, behavior. You don't? No, I, I max don't. out my... Do you know what the limit on Shopee? No, Apparently, I don't know. you cannot have more than 200 items on your card. I know because I have actually maxed out the 200 on my card wow. without cutting out. Really? Usually, yes. if I go online, it's because I want to buy something and then I'll just buy... Mm, oh my yeah. god, so lousy. I just use the safe function. <laughs> it's like, oh, this like quite interesting. Safe. And that right. works too. But I never ever go back to the safe. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> it's like I save it. Now I was like, where did I save it? Why can't I cannot find the list? So now you know, put it in the cart. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. no, no, no but no, higher chance that higher chance that you will check out. Yeah. Right? I think that's the idea. Depends, it depends. Mm. I think it all boils down to financial discipline. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. And I think and this is the point, right? Because it's not just about financial discipline, but mm. discipline in every mm. aspect of your life, yeah. which mm. is one of the core um features and the things that a lot of successful people talk about. That's why we hear stories of like the CEOs like, yeah, at 5 a.m. to mm. go and exercise because they know that for the rest of the day they won't be able to squeeze it in. Mm. So they deliberately get it up. But I mean for the most of us, average, you know, mere mortals, we're like, ah, oh, 5 a.m. I'd rather sleep in la. It's mm. okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, today we're gonna talk a little bit about this whole idea of like, should you allow yourself to indulge a little, you know, and uh, indulge in these luxuries and then eventually does it become a a deep-rooted part of your life and, you know, where, where does this bring you, right? And this is an extension topic of essentially the CNA interview, lah, right? About, about this whole young and in debt. So, should you allow yourself to indulge? I think that's the main question mm. today. I think my immediate thoughts is indulgence is like a slippery slope. Indulgence. You know, so once you, once you start it, I mean, the, the, the very fact of the word indulgence already implies that it's an addiction. It's something that uh, uh, gets you into a, a rabbit hole and it gets deeper and deeper, like a black hole. And, and, and indulgence is a, is a great word for marketers because when we sell marketers something... Marketers always ruin it, right? Uh, well, <laughs> well they, but they are also responsible for building up the economy, right? <laughs> so the idea is that if we can get someone to indulge in something, they will keep coming back for more and more and more. And that, that works very well in the P&Ls. So from a commercial point of view, indulgence is great. But from an individual point of view, of course, indulgence is not good because it implies lack of self-control, which also then leads to um, b- bigger consequences. Really? I thought mental yeah. positivity would be yeah, like I thought you would take indulgence, a... you know, mental wellness. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought mental wellness have okay. Because of the word indulgence. 
<laughs> if let's okay, say so we what, say can we define indulgence? What's so inherent okay. about indulgence in your dictionary? In my dictionary, indulgence means that there is lack of self-control. You can't control it. It's like so good that you want more and more and more. Is there an underlying idea that this is not what you actually need? Hmm. Yeah, Pick- because if it is, then it would be considered a necessity, right? Or it would be considered like productivity. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like why why do we not why do we never hear people say uh, let's indulge in learning? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, exactly, so that's why, right? exactly that's why yeah. I ask. You know, like maybe in our heads it, there's an underlying idea that it is not it's not something that is actually that you really need. Like, good. Let's you know? indulge in homework. And, and, <laughs> yeah. like, but you know what? Actually, this is a very good way to cycle our kids, right? Hey, come on, let's indulge in homework, let's indulge in schoolwork. Yeah. I think oh, indulge. Oh, and then let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay. yes, yes. Try that Try it. Let me know. I think let indulgence has associative uh, 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 association with hedonistic lifestyle too, I feel. Mm. Yeah. And that's the reason why I, I don't think it's a great thing if you have no control. Can, can you explain hedonistic? Hedonistic lifestyle basically means that uh, every action that you do is motivated by pleasure. Mm. There's a difference, huh? Not happiness, not joy, but pleasure. Pleasure basically means a a a, a moment a moment of spike in in dopamine and happiness. Yeah. So, like for example, sex, it's an indulgence. Um, cigarettes, e cigars. Is, is your call e cigar or e something? Vapes. Vapes. Hey, don't act like you don't know. Like. I really don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, no, no. but I know it's e something, right? Uh, what else? Vapes, uh, vaping, mm, clubbing, alcohol. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But, but yeah. So to me, I think that is how I define it. Okay, a hedonistic okay. lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Where you're centered around just making yourself feeling high and high and high. You know what's the problem with that? It's never enough. Mm. Mm. It's never enough. I mean, in fact, I read an article about why is it that we keep hearing a lot of celebrities, right? Young celebrities going to addiction. Do you know why? Mm. It's because, right, <laughs> since young, they, they are already experiencing popularity, adoration, a lot, and that gives them a lot of high. But their brains are not developed yet because our brain have this frontal cord which actually con- uh, manage self-control, which is PFC. Mm, and uh, that's only uh, developed in the late only, 20s, Yeah, right? exactly. So they got all the high before the brain has the self-control function. And therefore, these guys, these celebrities, need to keep looking for the next high, the next high, the next high because they cannot be doing concert every single day, right? They cannot be signing autographs every mm. single day. So that's how they got introduced to alcohol, to drugs, and that's how they get addicted because they had the high before the brain can actually control it. Mm. When yeah. you said they cannot be signing autograph every day, I'm like, can can you sign on your own? On your own? <laughs> <laughs> Everything you that's can sign. Yeah, that's called too high. It's also yeah, part of the high. high. Okay. But yeah, yeah. yeah but, but I like that idea though that mm. it is, you know, um, like people struggle so much and they try to keep justifying, right? Mm. I mean, when I was watching a video, what struck me was that one of the interviewees, she was justifying that she just chooses to go um and take grab rides 99% of the time. Mm. um, And then in return for it, she would eat at hawkers and then I'm like, huh, you mean eating at hawkers is so shameful, man? What do you mean to compensate for it? You go for hawkers. Like, there's nothing wrong with eating at hawkers, all right? It's, it's the norm. But to see it being presented that way made me think about like, yeah, you know, when you indulge so much in those grab rides instead of wake, having, you know, that discipline to wake up earlier and travel, public transport or whatever, the key thing is that you just allow yourself to keep slipping down and until you, to the point where you just cannot do what the previous version was anymore. Or if you can afford it, I always think that if you can afford indulgence, then of course there's that, that, that less of a problem, right? But uh, the question is also, even if you can afford it, does that justify overindulging in it? There will of course be side effects. Uh, like mm. for example, a person that indulges in grab or like w- only wants comfort. I mean, the fact is the person wants grab all the time because of if it's for comfort, Right, then that's a problem, right? Because they, they will want more comfort and more comfort. Wait, wait, but why is it a problem? No, no problem. Mm. Uh, unless they have to burn, you know, their wallet to be able to have that comfort. Mm. So if you, I always think that you can afford all indulgence. Uh, f- if you can afford it, then sure, go ahead. But there will also be side effects to indulgence. Like uh, I can afford to club every single day and, and buy bottles of champagne. Right? But can my body take it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there will always be some downsides to every indulgence because everything, there's a saying, right? everything in moderation, anything that is good, if you take too much of it, it also has bad effects. Right? Mm-hmm. 
Like positivity, too much positivity <laughs> is also not good, right? Yes, <laughs> I know it's true, right? That's why there's this thing called also... toxic positivity, right? Uh, that's a good so point. I believe in moderation, mm. not indulgence. Indulgence is the opposite extreme of I want more of all the good things that I want. I'm a huge believer also that we're the product of whatever we choose to feed. Mm. You know, if we feed that part of ourselves that craves pleasure, that craves comfort, that craves mm. convenience, then we're not training the rest of the, the other parts of us to learn how to deal with inconvenience, um, hardships and difficulties. Mm. So when... And we all know that in life, life is never 100% smooth sailing, right? So mm. if you don't learn how to train yourself up, then will you be able to really pick yourself up when mm. time comes? So this is my thinking. This right? is my, my acid test. La, that if you, it doesn't, no judgment, you can have any indulgence, but ask yourself two questions. Number one is, can you afford this indulgence? That's one. Number two is, can you actually stop it if you want to? Mm. Because mm. if let's say I like to go clubs every single day, I can afford it and it's an indulgence because I don't really need it. It's for my pleasure, right? but I can stop it. That means I can go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then next month, I'm not going to go and I'm okay about it and I don't feel weird. Uh, my body don't react in a way. Then I think you're fine. You're still in control of your indulgence. I think that's where it gets a bit insidious because mm. everyone thinks they can stop it anytime. Like I can just don't take grab. I can just don't go mm. to the club. I can just don't drink the alcohol. Or, but they don't realize that by training their bodies and their minds over time, you are triggering something inside you to be less inclined to say no. Mm, and so your ability to then say no becomes weaker and weaker over time because you literally program it that way. Because you keep saying yes to yeah, yourself, Yeah, so right? physical stuff mm. are easy to see, right? If you just keep indulging in like smoking and in alcohol and then that's why alcoholism is so hard to treat. Mm. But mm. if you talk to anyone who smokes and drinks alcohol, they will tell you, I can quit if I wanted to. Mm. Then when they really come down to it, uh, they struggle. And then what you're saying is that then it's too late already. Yeah, and then how many will actually be able to walk away at that point? I mean, most of people who go for all these treatments, they would want to, right? Otherwise, why would they be there in the first place? Mm. But some of them really just cannot overcome themselves to get out at and break out of that cycle anymore. And I worry that, you know, it's less insidious when you look at things like money and, you know, little mm. conveniences and luxuries here and there. But aren't they basically feeding back to the same biology within ourselves? Mm. Wow. I know what you mean. That means it, this, this whole inability to then self-regulate and self-control then translates into other aspects of life. Yes. And that is what you think is the main problem, not the indulgence in itself. And yes. she's saying that the fact that we start doing more of those things, we're already losing self-control. Mm. Mm. But and we don't realise it because it happens bit by bit. Mm. It's not mm. an immediate Interesting. Effect. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's like these days people must take photo. <laughs> it's like, no, don't take photo, man. I just want to sit here and watch. It's beautiful. <laughs> like, like, stop asking me to take photo. Right, right. But yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. So then what is the long-term problem then in, in that sense you now when, when we have all these... And and, okay, and to be clear, I don't think this is a young person problem only. Yeah, it can mm. happen to right? anyone. It's uh, more and more, you know, it's like how the, how the old people, there was a period of time, they always say to young people, yeah, pay it's you know, stop using your phone, blah, blah, blah. And then look at them, right? Mm. <laughs> Today, most of them cannot leave the phone. It's true. Right? So it is about access. Once you access it, you know, uh, all your weakness, you know, gets revealed, right? Within 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 that platform mm. in itself, right? So, so this is not a uniquely uh, young person it's problem. Not. It's right? a human problem. It reminds me of the marshmallow test. Have you heard of the marshmallow yeah, test? Right? The so they, they, they have this bunch of kids. <clears throat> they put them in the room and uh, they were told this, okay, we're going to put one marshmallow on the table. We're going to leave the room. If in 30 minutes or whatever time span, you don't eat one marshmallow, we will give you the second marshmallow. Mm. And these little kids, they, you re literally, they were looking at the marshmallow and they were drooling and they were like trying to cover their eyes, sing a song, you know. And later on, the experiment showed that those kids that were able to withhold instant gratification actually turns out to do better in life. Mm. Mm. So I would say that uh, fundamentally, uh, we're all pointing out to that one thing, which is self-control and discipline. Do we have it? Are we trained? And, and like any skill, discipline is trained, trainable. And the minute we have self-control and discipline being trained, then we will never subject ourselves to indulgence because we, we know when to say no. Do you think you're disciplined then? I think you're quite disciplined. I think I'm relatively disciplined. Yeah, but um, you also indulge, right? Um, actually, no. You don't? Actually, you no. don't yeah. indulge? Yeah, I'm, I, I have this... I have That's this, uh, Instagram. I, so I, 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 I give you an example. I give you an example of uh, what could possibly be an indulgence. Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix. 
Netflix is is a one. But uh, and I, I and that's why I agree with uh, what Don says, right? That yeah, it, you sometimes thought you can, but actually you can't. But um, some time ago, I I had this filter in my head. I have this alarm in my head. I say, hey, uh, I think you're watching too much Netflix. This is just this voice in my head that says you're watching too much Netflix, and immediately uh, habit kicks in. So I realized that oh, it's becoming a habit. Okay, I'm going to displace that habit. So what I did these days is um, I make sure that I only watch Netflix uh, for a certain amount of time while eating. And the minute I'm in my bedroom, the minute I lay on my bed, it immediately triggers me to watch Netflix. So what I do nowadays is my laptops uh, are, are away and my handphone, now I install Kindle into my handphone. So the very first button I press instead of the Netflix button became the Kindle button. And so I, I, I'm deliberately trying to change my habit. And I'm saying that mm. if we have been trained, I'm not saying I'm, the, I'm, I'm good at it, but I'm saying that if we are trained and we understand how our mind works, we can actually kill off bad habits and create new habits. Mm. Yeah. And no judgment here. I think ultimately it boils down to what the individual wants, right? But sometimes we don't even realize what we want or need until it's a bit too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does take a certain level of, you know, um, asking around, learning from other people, mm. folks older than you, and then you try and avoid their mistakes, which then shortcuts mm. your stage to success and, and even more progression in life. So, so okay, so yeah. I think you you on some level you have elevated indulgence into a barrier to success. No, right? that not means, really. that, means, that means if you keep indulging, you create a certain psyche, you create a certain habit, you create a lack of discipline and lack of self-control and this whole chunk becomes a, becomes a hurdle. It's a correlation. But, yeah, so, so I yeah. think that there's some, there's some, I can push right in the sense of yeah. like, that's how, that's how, that's how it's going, right? How, how we are thinking about it. And we can even you know? we can even ask ourselves, how did this indulgence even start? Because mm. most indulgence start because they want to erase bad feelings, right? Because, um, for example, why do I drink, right? It's because I'm stressed. Or why do I smoke? Because I, I feel tired and I, I want to I have an a, a immediate uh, boost in my dopamine. Mm. So I feel that um, a reason why people indulge is also because they, uh, they do not know how to deal with the stress and fears and anxiety they have in their life. So they just cope at, at best the way they know how. But what about grab rights then? I seriously think that grab ride is not really a major indulgence, um, especially if you talk to entrepreneurs. Yeah, financially, right? Uh, that's why I'm saying that if anything that you do becomes a habit, just make sure that it doesn't kill your wallet. But if there's a bigger purpose to doing it, there's no problem. So, for example, um, I take grab all the time too, mm. right? But would I use the word indulgence? No, because I'm not enjoy. I'm not you. I'm not going to grab to feel pleasured, but I'm going grab because I value my time. And I realized yeah, different that... Different, because you use your grab time to actually do work, which is correct. income generating. So you're literally earning money as you sit in the uh, grab. So that's how I think things, right? Yeah, so it's a very different concept, right? <laughs> I mean, if I'm sitting in a grab today, <sighs> um, some, and sometimes I do take grab because it's like, ah, oh, that place where I don't know, do I have a mm. lot of time? I need to pick up my kids, I rush, I rush, I, never mind, I'll just take grab. But I may or may not be doing work in the grab to justify that. So in other words, is what are you using money to pay for? If you're using money to buy back time, some people will say that it's not indulgence, right? But if I'm using money to buy comfort and pleasure, then uh, it will imply it's indulgence and and it's okay, no judgment, right or wrong, but it's can you afford it? And it also implies that if a person keeps using money to buy comfort, comfort and pleasure, it also means that uh, they're either very stressed out, they have no better coping mechanism, or they're not playing a bigger game in life. Because if you are playing a much bigger game in life, like you have a very big goal, you have a mission, you have a purpose, you'll be so caught up in trying to fulfill your purpose, you will not be thinking too much about your pleasures. Talk to talk to the CEOs. Like uh, they might have moments of de-stressing, mm. but many of them have so big things that they want to work on that they have no time to go and do all the little indulgence. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are psychopathic, and some of them are on a <laughs> PR stun, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, I don't there's think every, all of them are as great. There are different as, types of people that yes, form. Yes, there are some very interesting people. Successful uh, billionaires, entrepreneurs, and you really sit down and talk to them and interview them mm-hmm. and you ask them, do you have any indulgence? They'll look at you and like, ah, huh? That's a very weird question. To I mean, ask. I've talked to many, so I mm. I kind of I kind of understand what you're saying. Yeah. Not not. I'm just saying it's not all of them. <laughs> Some of them are on, right, a, go, your on a PR campaign. Hey, I hope you're enjoying Wise and Shine so far. I'm your host Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut, and for us to continue to do this show so that you become a tad bit wiser every week, you gotta like, share, subscribe, help us be the algorithm. But even more importantly, if you can. 
comment in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and also some questions that you would love us to answer. Yep, now back to the show. I have a question for you guys. So hmm. you never ever lean into your indulgence? I'm scared no. of leaning into my indulgence because I know how bad... Uh, I, because I've, I've got addictions before. So I know how bad it is. Um, and that's why I, 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 I don't want to even test it. Really? Mm. For me, I do. But that's only because like my childhood through like about 15, 20 years of my life, I've had so much practice with self-control and discipline that I know I can pretty much say no. And I can recognize when something is eroding my ability to say no, to stop and then build an environment to get rid of that. Yeah. Mm. So an example, right? Um, mm. I tried smoking when I was a kid. Mm. Oh, who doesn't, right? As a teenager, I'm not a kid, okay? Um, and I didn't get addicted. Because I knew of the consequences of mm. smoking before I started. I was just curious, you know, I want to test it out. And I hated the taste. Uh. So that was a even better, easy, even yeah. easier for me to quit, right? Um, There was a period of my life where I, of course, like a lot of my peers went clubbing, drinking, mm. and I could down like three shots and not get drunk and that kind of stuff, wow. right? But <laughs> it, I was also able to take myself out of it when I wanted to. Because you were trained since young already. Yes, because I trained uh, that ability See, not, was but not all of us have that skill really? yeah. so yeah. so you do you feel like willpower is limited in that sense of course it is it is and the more you feed into things that mm. ev- eat away at your willpower yeah. the yeah. harder it is for yes. you to complete the task which is yeah. also why why uh, restaurants actually serve you bread and cheese for free mm. even because science have proven that the minute you take all these carbs it actually slows down your frontal brain, which is again the part that controls self-control, and therefore it it makes you indulge in more food, ordering more food, more oh. desserts. That's why they give you uh, all this uh, free wine uh, uh, and bread. Go read it. Oh. So the the all it boils down to is: Are your children developed in their frontal part of their brains? And unfortunately, most of us never even think, think about our brain. Most not. Yeah. Most of us have no knowledge about our brain, right? But if we become very conscious that, oh, the PFC, which is the, the prefrontal cortex, is the brain that is in charge of decision making. And if it's slow because of the food that we eat or because of hate damage like rugby players, uh, it actually prevents us from making good decisions. The reality is I realize the majority of people really mm. have difficulties when it comes to discipline and willpower. Mm. And mm. there's no judgment, okay? Because I, I also fall prey to the no same. You're saying no judgment like 10 times already, collectively. <laughs> Because yeah, I think yeah. people listening to it tend to feel judged. Yeah. Then that or closes, they self-condemn themselves. Yeah, that, that closes them to any insight that they can get mm, from correct. listening to it. So my, my, Discipline know, is yeah, a skill. I highly caveat. recommend you guys to read this book by Ryan Holiday called Discipline is Destiny. And whoever yeah, has oh, have nice control title. over their indulgence and, and have control, uh, you would actually be able to navigate life more purposefully and to achieve the goals that you want. Because mm. there are 101 things out there that will distract you from achieving your goals. I mean, like we said, marketers ruin everything. Yeah, marketers will always want to make you spend oh, money say, on yeah, things you say. that you... Say you say a long time ago, yes. I said it and you reminded me yes. that marketers <laughs> are very good at making you spend money on things that you don't really need because mm. they understand persuasion. And it doesn't help that, you know, today advertising is so uh, accessible. You know, the minute we switch on our phones, someone's already trying to sell us something. Mm. Uh, And then not forgetting there's also peer pressure and not forgetting there's also a lack of positive self-image. Like we feel like we're not good enough. We don't like ourselves. And so we have to do all these things to make ourselves feel better so that we feel fitted in. So there's just so many factors that causes us to want to spend more money. Mm. Uh, on things that we don't need. And reading this parenting book that talks about discipline as well, Mm. and it's interesting because it makes a difference between uh, environmentally enforced discipline versus self-discipline. Mm. So they quoted this study where this school was really good at producing students for and preparing them for college because the way the school made that environment, right, you know, like the, the motivational posters and the schedule yeah. and how the teacher talked to you and everything was all very much programmed to in, enforce that discipline wow, in the students. Mm. But mm. the problem came in when they went to college. Because? Because that disciplinary environment was no longer there. Mm. Some of them who had that self-discipline went on to succeed. The rest fell out. 
Some mm. didn't even graduate. Mm. And I thought that was like, oh, that, that, that really illuminated something in me because I never thought of discipline as so segregated, you know, your mm. environment, enforced discipline mm. versus one that comes from inside Redone. you. And I think Redone. educators would say this as intrinsic versus extrinsic. Very true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And as parents, we want, yeah, the question I ask myself all the time is how can I try to, you know, instill in my kid and teach him over the years that he grows up and train up this self-discipline so that in the event that we are not around he has what it takes to go no, on and continue there are that about that. Their, their, their skills are that so for example give me an example of uh, an action that you want your kid to do more of homework <laughs> okay very good let's do homework okay now now give me an let's action in homework. Yeah, let's give me a, an action that your kids actually enjoy doing a lot playing very good so wh- the way to train discipline or one of the skills that I've learned is by association so tell your kids that after Doing they homework, homework, one hour homework to play, equals right? to one hour of play. Yeah, I tried that. Yeah. It doesn't work on my kid. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't work on your kid <laughs> in what sense? Maybe because you're still too young. <laughs> no, but it's okay. Don't give up because don't remember yeah, they're young. It, it means right? that their PSC not built. Yeah, my PSC correct. is only built at four years old. You just push away the homework, go and play immediately. Then I'm like, hey, come back, come back. <laughs> Very hard. But yeah, I think it's the age and it's about like keep repeating it until it becomes a habit. Mm. And also that because he's two years old, so he doesn't understand what play and work is. So for example, whatever homework that you give to your kid, right? Can we make it fun so that it looks like play? Tough, yeah. tough job. Half, half, half. Yeah. There, yeah, there are books on that. Uh, mm. the, you read this book called Conscious Parenting. Have, have. Yeah, it's very, have, very cool. But I can honestly acknowledge, I mean, I agree with all the signs and the methods, but mm. the reality is it's very difficult to turn every piece of homework into something fun. I get into it. like play. Mm, uh, yeah. And to do that re- requires a lot from the parent. That's yeah. why even full-time parenting is so very difficult. It's crazy. It's mm. crazy. But I, I am actually one of those people that will indulge and lean into my indulgence when I need it. Right, so I have a very That's diff- a difference when yeah. you need it. Yeah. No, no. So, so and, and the thing is, I may not make a conscious choice when mm. I begin the indulgence. Right? So when I, when, I, when I first start indulging, I may not be consciously aware. Mm. But midway through, I will have an awareness that I am doing it. By extension means I'm coping with some complex problems at this point in time that I cannot solve. right? And I will not pull myself out of it. But can you pull yourself when you want to? I'm, I'm not sure whether I can. You know, uh, man, by extension, I think I have a different way to cope with. I have a different mm. way to manage it. right? So, so l- let, me, let me explain. right? So I will not pull the plug on that situation where I'm coping. <clears throat> but I will, I will somehow develop this like third person view mm. of, of myself. I was like, hey, you are coping, ah? Huh? Life very hard, ah, huh, recently. Mm. <laughs> so, so I will have that, you know, and, and, and that third person will keep me accountable in a sense of like, I will continue to cope. And I am vividly aware that I'm coping because mm. times are hard, things are complex. And I have to prioritize because there are 101 things that mm. are problematic. Right? So, um, and sometimes I just lean into it. I have, I find no qualm in e- leaning into an indulgence you know, when, when I'm conscious about it. Yeah, you but know the, I mean? the fact is, you mentioned it already, that you're conscious about yeah, it. That yeah. means that it's as if like your finger is on the on-off button and that yeah. you, at any point in time when you're enough of it and you're, you're okay, you can switch it off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, we're not too sure about the message. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They have on, do you even realize there's an on-off button? Yeah, but you know what I'm they, saying, right? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying, right? That, 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 is a is a very different view of what people are saying out there. Everybody mm. tell you that you know, oh, uh, it's very bad to do these things. I uh, shouldn't be coping. I was like, coping is great. Okay, mm. coping is great. Just like lying is great. Okay, I will teach you all more next time, right? But oh. coping is a fundamental to support yourself through mm. a complex situation. And co- what? Why is a situation complicated? It's because there's no clear solution at this point in time. It doesn't matter if you stop coping. Even if you stop coping, ain't no shit is going to change. Right? Because this problem is so complex that it cannot be solved now, now. There are multiple mm. things that are involved, multiple people that are involved. You know, it is complex. It will be here to stay. Right? So by extension, so what if you don't cope? Right? In, in fact, you're hurting yourself more mm-hmm. by harming yourself from not coping. Yeah, but I also want to say you that know, they're a healthy way of coping. Of course, that is a relative term, right? In a mm. sense that uh, amongst the 101 ways to cope, whether mm. is it like going to the gym or mm. flying or traveling or like smoking or that, right? There are 101 ways to go about doing it. Mm-hmm. And there are certain ways that are relatively healthy by the definition of what is mm. considered healthy today, right? Yeah. And this one, I fully agree. Mm. So that is, the, that is the part where, firstly, I think we cannot... Um, 
demonize coping. Mm, of course. Right? We cannot yeah. demonize coping and we must recognize the value of coping and why mm-hmm. do people even begin to cope with the situation. Mm. Right? Mm. But then recognize that, okay, maybe there are other ways to cope. Right, yep. where we can, you know, uh, choose better ways or like better ways, lah. Right, mm. and then, of course, the better ways is dependent on the goals that you're going for. Mm. I think that's right? why ultimately it boils down to the individual. Yeah. Because mm. if the individual finds that that action or that indulgence or whatever it is is necessary for them in order to cope, mm. and as long as they don't want to get out of it, nothing that anyone else says will yes. get them out. Yes. Yeah, and, and but the question that we're raising here is, could overindulging in that coping mechanism? lead you to it slowly erode your ability to get out mm. yeah and the answer is to. I think we all agree that the answer is yes yeah. because uh, because of the way our, our brain works correct and again uh, a very practical analogy yeah. um, I'll, I'll use my weight loss story as an example right so y'all most of you know you've seen my change where I've lost 20 mm. kg in less than a year Um, and the common tri- everyone knows what causes you to lose weight okay. it's just because you eat more yeah. than your body mm. burn very simple okay everyone on earth knows that okay but how come so few people can lose weight successfully. Mm. And I realized, right, it all boils down to the knowledge they have, as, but more in terms of the willpower and the discipline. Why? Because, you know, like everyone else, when you put something in front of me, I cannot resist. Mm. So like yesterday, I was at a party and the host <laughs> cooks spaghetti and, you know, amazing, super amazing garlic bread. And usually, uh, I will limit myself to just one slice of bread mm. because based on <clears> my <throat> knowledge, I know that a slice of bread is about 70 calories. You put mm-hmm. on a spread of stuff, it becomes like 100 to 150 calories. That adds up. Mm. So if I, I'm not careful with controlling, I'm going to be eating a lot more than what my body is going to be burning and then I'm going to gain weight Mm. so I'll stop I'll, I'll be able to have that discipline right but the bread was right in front of me <laughs> and it was so nice it was so yummy and the spaghetti sauce was amazing and <laughs> I just com- even though my head was telling me no no Don, you can't this is the X number of yeah. calories you know it and you didn't exercise you haven't exercised for like one week you won't be able to exercise for the next day and burn this off you know must have some self-control I couldn't why because yep. it was right it's in too front late of already. me mm. yeah, but, yeah so like what you did I had to build I have to actually consciously build the environment to take things out I'm very good at not eating junk food and snacks and potato chips but my husband likes to when he eats the potato chip right and he doesn't finish it once at sitting obviously he will then like you know seal it put it on the table where it's in front of me where I work and then I work work, work, and then my eyes will just like you know and after a while I'll find myself eating it Mm. and then he'll come back like who finished my potato chips I'm like why you put it in front of me don't you know I can't say no and I think that so I know my ability to say no is eroded the moment the thing is in front of me but that's great you see because you have self-awareness I think which is what what uh, uh, Reggie has as well that you are it's, you're aware that you're indulging and you're aware of the triggers but because, yet I can't say no uh, when it's right in fine, front of but me but if you know what the triggers are I think that you can save yourself the second episode that's why that's I, it's point. about making sure mm. I put myself in environments where those things don't appear yeah. in front of mm. me. Like but not going for too many parties, not going correct. for, um, you know, not like maybe either tell my husband, please stop putting the potato yeah. chip there or changing my workplace entirely to somewhere else. Which is else. why guys, uh, I like our SPS, Singapore Police Force, they always have this uh, 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 saying, right? Prevention is better than cure. And it's yeah. really, really true. Human beings, we sometimes overestimate our self-discipline and our willpower. We don't really have a lot, right? Yes. So, and, and or I won't say we don't have a lot, we have limited. And that limit is also biological. So if we don't train our brains and from young, we're not training our self-discipline and we don't know what our triggers are, then obviously we're like a boat in a river and the river decides where we go. Mm. And I think all of us, right? Even the most perfect people, the most disciplined, <laughs> Oh. people will still struggle yes. with that real Think power. Think of it is, um, um, so th- this is an analogy that people give that every morning when you wake up, you have 10 units of discipline or 10 units of willpower, which is also why you try to do the most difficult things early in the morning. Uh, because early in the morning, you can still overcome your, your, your laziness and your fear to go and do it. But that will take up maybe six units of willpower, which means you only have four left. And therefore, as the day goes, your ability to make good decisions uh, uh, actually dwindles. And if you have no self-awareness, you actually put yourself in an environment that will make you even more tempted. So I think there are two two core skills we need to have. Number one is self-awareness. Number two is actually the act of self-discipline. These two will prevent or reduce the negative effects of indulgence. 
Okay, so if let's say someone, they after they listen, they say, like, okay, 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 maybe I need to learn how to, mm. you know, be a little bit more disciplined or, you know, be a little bit uh, less giving in to my indulgence, yeah. you know, uh, what would you recommend? Oh, them read this book called Atomic Habits. And if you have no time ah. to read that book, Atomic Habits, just reach out to me, I'll send you a summary. Mm. Um, it's one of the best, best books on how to remove bad habits and how to create good habits. And there's a framework to it. Mm. Yeah, so very powerful book. I think for me, what I would say is um, ask yourself first, what indulgence do you want to get rid of? Mm. Because it, it, if you don't want to get rid of it, then mm. maybe it's a necessity, not an indulgence, right? So for the ones that you do want to fix, then what can you do? What actions or what steps can you do to change that? And that comes in recognizing what in that environment or situation is eating away at your willpower. So mm. I was very conscious and I wanted to fix my indulgence in food. Mm. So I deliberately created an environment where the food was out of my sight as much as possible. I can't factor in my husband, but you know, as much as I could control, <laughs> I try to keep it out of the way. Yes. I built up a schedule. I hate exercising like everyone else. So I made it easy by just making sure every time I roll out the mat, I just need to do two actions to get my brain into the gear, the workout oh. gear, right? Roll up my mat, put on my sports shoes, go. Don't think, like Nike says, just do it, right? So I, I created that two-step thing to get myself ready. And obviously, there are a lot of days where I do that and I still don't feel like working mm. out. But because like it's something that I've trained myself repeatedly almost mm. every day to do, my brain, my body just go on autopilot yes. mode already. Very good. Yeah, so yeah. doing that, and then it's really about training. So I actually, yeah. it took me about one whole year of training myself to exercise before I started to enjoy it. Mm. But for one whole year, I was pretty much cursing every single time I did exercise. <laughs> yeah, I guess like some people, Wow, you know they really love exercising so it it's different. easy for them yeah, but like, like you yeah. you love writing and you're so good at it so all of us are just given a deck of cards of good and bad different skills yeah. Yeah. So, so just it's understand- about training what we want yes that's, that's it, the it's a trainable self-discipline is a trainable skill exactly that schools don't teach exactly so you and you have to do this for yourself right because no one's gonna do it for you mm. unless you know you're still a child and then your parents really care for you and they might create that for you but for the most part most of us will have to instill and build the those processes to achieve discipline in the areas that we want to. Mm. So for anyone who doesn't think that they have a problem, <laughs> then there's not there's nothing yeah, that yeah. you need to fix. Yeah. But if you recognize that there is something you want to fix, like you feel I'm indulging and watching too much Netflix or I'm spending too much on grab rice or mm. I'm spending too much on, on cigarettes or I'm I'm spending too much on the latest fashion gear all the time, yeah. right? Then ask yourself, what can you do to instill that? I, I know what the book says, right? It's yeah. about that 1% every single Correct. day. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And it's really about every time you do something. Now, I cannot just do like 101% to become no, yeah. 100. It's uh, a lot more. But yeah. that, that really adds up. MIT, in fact, you listening to this episode today, right? It's already your 1% for yeah. the day, right? And That's then, why you should listen to all the rest of our episodes <laughs> as well. Yeah. And if you do the math, uh, uh, if every day you improve by 1%, right? In two months, you will double the performance or any skill that you're working on. Mm. So it's absolutely doable. Mm. Yeah, Reggie? Yeah, so don't underestimate that 1%. Yeah. Right? I love how they plug that. I don't need to plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I think, like I said, right, I, I do give in to my indulgence and I'm very consciously aware over mm. time that, okay, you're coping and all that shit, right? But I also do uh, a lot of the whole like environment kind of thing. Mm. And just for context, say, right, I want environment that... I, I think people find it very cute, right? I always reply difficult messages when I'm walking. That's why I always voicemail you, right? So every time someone asks me for a decision, mm. they want me to uh, look at this thing, you know, there's a problem here. Can you solve this? Can you look at that? Mm. I will reply all of them at one go when I'm out for a walk. So as I'm walking, I think, think, think oh yeah, that thing. Okay, like nice. that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah. Then walk, walk, think, 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 oh yeah, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, so that is how I, I do it. And then am I, when I have a starvation of ideas, I go for a swim. My mind will go into like some crazy mode and then it will it will churn some ideas out, right? So I think it's, it's, it's about working with how you have been built over time. Yeah, and, and that's something amazing yeah. about you that we realized, I mean, we realized a long time ago, but this episode, it really shines a lot on it, is that you have very, very clear awareness of yourself and how you work how you function mm, mm. And, and therefore that clarity gives you that confidence to know when to say no and stop yeah yeah I solve all my accounting problems in the morning 
Oh. Because I probably <laughs> tahan I was like, there you go. See? <laughs> <laughs> you, probably, you probably use a six, seven exactly. units of self like, discipline. <laughs> yeah, go for what? Answer your question. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's kind of that's kind of how it works, right? But but I think mm. with the CNA documentary, you know, uh, it is really shining light on this phenomenon that's going around where a lot of people are just kind of mm. chasing for short term highs, lah. Right? Whether is it the hedonistic thing or whether is it like you know mm. overindulgence in comfort and and all that and. The idea at the end of the day is uh, you got to find what works for you. you know? And if there's a problem, hmm. then maybe solving it uh, takes some of the ways that we've established today. Right? Yep. Right? Yeah. So uh, coping is great. Okay, take care. <laughs> <laughs> coping is great. Coping is great. <laughs>